1440p is the future, and today we're gonna to show you how to get into it step by step without breaking the bank. For only $750, you can game at 1440p in your favorite games, and again, we're gonna show you how to build this step by step so you don't get lost along the way. But before we dive into today's build guide, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by our good friends over at GVG Mall, our favorite place to buy Windows 10 keys and a lot of other awesome software for your gaming PC. If you're tired of seeing that Windows activation watermark in the bottom corner of your screen, check out GVG Mall with the link down below. We do have a special discount code that Matt will tell you guys about in just a second. Activating Windows is super easy. You literally just buy the key, Windows 10, Windows 11, maybe even the next Windows, it'll still be supported. So we absolutely love using GVG Mall because you are paying a severe discount. And if you use code TV20, our normal code, for a short period of time, you can save 25% on your next purchase of a Windows 10 key or any other software they have to offer. They also offer Office 2019 licenses. If you don't want to deal with the Microsoft 365 suite, you can buy that Office key and be good to go. You're set in stone there. No worries about paying monthly. You can find those links in the description down below. And to give you an idea on how much we trust them, we've actually been partnering with GVG Mall for years now. We've been giving out the Windows 10 and Windows 11 keys for quite some time. And like Matt said, we do use them over at PC Bros quite a bit and we really have never had any issues with them. So we do really like GVG Mall. GVG Mall, check the link down below. Big thanks again to them for sponsoring today's video. Use code TB20 to save 25% today. Let's get right into the video, shall we? Guys, we're only eight days into 2024 and we have already done three build guides now. So we're gonna be doing a lot this year. This one's a really nice middle ground, 750 bucks. We've also done a $500 one. We've done a Lenovo P520 upgrade path. We got a $1,000 one coming up soon and a $625 one. I mean, literally all within a week. So it's gonna be pretty freaking sick, guys. And now we're gonna go ahead and go over each individual part. For the CPU, we have the i5-12400F six core 12 thread. This is an awesome CPU because it runs in Gen 4, but also has Gen 5 support, six core 12 thread. It does come with the stock cooler that actually works really well. And the best part is they're about 150 bucks right now. And this is a really awesome CPU for the price. We're not gonna use that stock cooler though. We decided to make this thing look a little bit nicer. And also it's gonna perform a little bit better because these things do really like to boost on their own. This is the ID Cooling SC214 XT ARGB, which is an awesome 120 mil cooler that is ARGB and it's going to cool the CPU really well. Now for the motherboard, we have an ASRock B660M Pro RS. This is an awesome motherboard because it's micro ATX, but it kind of has some full ATX features such as some RGB underglow, two four pins for the CPUs, and then even some extra PCIe lanes and extra M.2. So it's a really good board for the price. Now for 750 bucks, you could go with 16 gigs of RAM. You could even go DDR5 if you wanted to, but instead we decided to get a really large amount of capacity. We have 32 gigs of T4 Delta that is DDR4, so you do have to pick a different motherboard if you want to go DDR5, but we really like the idea of just having a lot of capacity, especially for those new AAA titles out there. Then for the SSD, we have a Western Digital Black SN770. This is an awesome Gen 4 SSD that's going to run really fast, as you can see. Very good read and write speeds, and we really like these drives. Another good alternative, if you can't find this one, is the Crucial P3+. Plus. Now for the graphics card, we have the ASRock Challenger RX 7600. Now we love this GPU for 1440p gaming and it has enough VRAM to do that in higher end games with the eight gigs of VRAM, but it's really an awesome graphics card for 1080p high refresh rate. And when paired with the i5-12400, you're gonna see some really awesome performance in your favorite esports titles at 100 plus FPS. Now to power this build, this is our go-to at this point. This is the Zalman Gigamax 600 watt 80 plus bronze power supply. Honestly, you can go with a wide range of different power supplies from this build, but we like this one because it's readily available on Amazon at good prices. 600 watts, more than enough for this PC build. It's a room for upgrades in the future because this GPU and CPU are pretty power efficient. And uh, yeah, we use them a ton and we use them at PC Bros. If you don't want to build the PC, you can go to PC Bros. Tech and buy a PC today. Just go to Toast Bros. 200 and check out and save 2% your next purchase. Now for the case, we have a new case from Sama. This is the M203 which we've used the Sama Micro ATX case a ton, but this one comes with three fans up front, ARGB, and one in the back. You know, I'm gonna verify their ARGB. I did buy this last minute because I wanted to swap up the case from our $1,000 build guide, which is gonna be using the Montec Air 100, so stay subscribed for that. But as long as this is ARGB, it'll work really well in putting together this build very easily, and everything is shoved down here, so let's find out. Ah, yes, look at that. We got ARGB support, so we're good to go there. Um, it'll be really easy to sync up the fans and the cooler with this build. 
detailed and yeah, overall really solid case for the money. Tempered glass side panel looks really nice and it's gonna be great for a $750 build. Now, again, this is a step-by-step -step build guide. We're gonna show you how to set up the motherboard, install CPU, RAM, storage, get everything good to go. Then from there, we're gonna put the power supply in the case, put everything together, power it up, and then show you guys how you can game on this thing at 1080p and even 1440p. So don't get lost along the way. Watch this video and we're gonna help you out. Normally we would do the CPU and the cooler first, but because we're using such a large tower cooler, I don't want it to cover things up and you guys not be able to see what we're doing. So I think we're gonna start off with the first thing, the RAM. The RAM is always so satisfying. We're gonna be using slots one and three. And the reason you wanna skip a slot is because if you were to use one and two, it's not gonna run in dual channel. And we want this RAM to perform the best it possibly can. So the furthest away from the CPU is pretty much always going to be slot one. And what you're gonna to need to do is make sure that you line your notch up. So this would be the incorrect way. And I'll show you guys what I mean here. Let's go ahead and, all right, you see that little notch? You ready? So now I like to use both my thumbs. You're gonna push down with equal force. And it does take a lot of force. Do not be scared. I promise it won't bite you. You ready? <laughs> nice little clicks. So we know they're in all the way. You shouldn't have to push these brackets up because if you do, that probably means that your RAM's not seated properly. Let me open my knife. IO shield as a knife. I love showing you guys this little handy dandy hack. All right, let's go ahead and get our Gen 4 SSD out. So whenever you have a Gen 4 SSD, you always wanna use the top slot of your M.2 because you notice that we have a couple of M.2s here. We actually have one down here. We have a Wi-Fi M.2 here, and then we have this one. Well, this one also has a nice handy dandy heat sink on it. And for a Gen 4 drive, it's pretty nice to have because these things do actually get pretty hot. Kind of the same concept as heat sinks on RAM. So we just take off the two screws. These are gonna be PH1, by the way. Tiny little Phillips, so PH1 or PH zero even just magnetically Did you see that John? that was pretty crazy so yeah you don't want to use a standard ph2 it literally won't work so we're going to go ahead and open our drive it's slightly delicate with these but not too delicate and just like the ram these m.2s can only go in one way it's gonna be a little notch and it does go in at an angle and you notice how it's kind of just sitting there at an angle so you're not going to put it straight in you put it in at a slight angle and then you're going to push down like this and sometimes these have a screw that hold them in but in this case it actually uses the the heat sink to hold it in so you really want to make sure that you get this positioned properly um, when you put the heat sink on if you have to move it around a lot the problem is that heat sink has a little thermal pad that's very sticky and so if you move it around too much you may end up unseating the M.2, but I'm very confident that we got it in the right place right now. And uh, with these screws, they're very tiny. You do not need a lot of force. Uh, really just finger tight on the screws is plenty. You can really tell if the M.2 is in the right spot just kind of by looking at it. You can see a really good angle from here. As you can see, it's nice and straight with the heat sink. So we know it's in there good. So at this point, we can put the cooler on pretty comfortably now. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the CPU. So we're gonna push this latch down and then out, just like this. And it does take a lot of force. It's just like the RAM, don't be scared. Oh. And so now you can see all the pins there. Those pins are what you gotta be really careful about. Intel does not have the pins on the CPU. They have them on the motherboard. So here is our 12400. And you don't have to be super delicate with these. If it was an AMD, like an older AMD CPU, like an AM4 processor, you have a bunch of pins here. But as you can see here, you can touch these and the CPUs are just fine. With the CPU, you're going to be lining up these notches. There's four of them in total. You can also kind of reference this. You see this little tiny arrow? That's gonna line up with this arrow right here. So go ahead and open that up again. And what I like to do is just very gently drop the CPU in. If for some reason the CPU is like, let's say I dropped it in, it was at an angle, don't push and move it. You basically wanna kind of use like the tip of your finger and just nudge it into place. So now you're gonna push this down. This plastic cover may or may not, it did pop off, there we go. So kind of hold down on that. And you're gonna push down and over again. And like I said, that does take a lot of force. That's how this thing makes good contact is it has to have a lot of pressure holding it in. And now we're on the last step of the motherboard, which wasn't too bad, honestly, guys. We're gonna go ahead and install this ID cooling all black tower cooler that has the nice ARGB fan. I just said all black it is literally this part's black. So we had a bag of mounting hardware and these usually look really intimidating, but you only really need a couple of things from here. The reason they give you so much stuff is because they want you to be able to mount these coolers on any type of mounting. That includes AM3, AM4, it includes LGA 1200 and 1700 and so forth. We're basically going to open this baggie and obviously it comes with instructions, but I have built so many of these, I just know what screws we're gonna use. We're gonna use these standoffs here. These are basically just to set the height for where the cooler is gonna sit. So the first thing we're gonna do is flip this over and we're gonna put this back plate on. We can go ahead and verify that it's the right back plate and everything, the right length. You can adjust 
test these little guys in the back here. Once you get it to the right length, come on, there we go. All right, so that's how it's gonna sit in there. Now we'll go ahead and remove these. These are basically to keep the back plate from falling inside the back of your build because a lot of times people will put these coolers on after they're installed or maybe you know you decide to upgrade it later on and what happens is these back plates will fall behind the build and then sometimes you even gotta take the motherboard out which really sucks. So now we're gonna use these right here and we're gonna go ahead and just set each one onto here. And then one last thing I like to always do is just kind of verify which way this is gonna go on. So let's see. Yep, that's gonna, these are gonna face inwards like this. I, I, I do this all the time where, you know, you can put them on this way or this way, and then you have to take them off because you did it wrong. They sit facing in towards the CPU. And then you're gonna use these kind of fine thread long screws. And these are kind of proprietary screws, so try not to lose these. And then make sure you get the right hole lined up. So we're gonna be using the outer holes here. So I'll go ahead and screw this down. And remember guys, when screwing anything on really anything, motherboards, cars, whatever you really want to try to do opposing force so don't just tighten one side down all the way all at once that's kind of how you break things go ahead and do the same thing here so now this is a really important step and we have left these on before surprisingly most of the time your computer still works with it on it just does not cool very well and uh what's uh, we got some of this thermal paste with it you know what we'll use this I normally like to use like, you know, Arctic or something like that, but honestly the ID cooling stuff's not bad. We, we normally get the big tubes of it uh, with some of their coolers and you know, it's on the job. So since these coolers are rectangular, I like to do a line of thermal paste because I just find that that gets really uh, good spread rather than doing like a dot in the middle for some of the square CPUs out there. And then sometimes I'll even just do a little bit, you know, kind of like diagonal, just like that. So that should spread across the CPU really well. If, it, if your cooler has any logos on it, make sure you pay attention to this step now because I've definitely put my fair share of coolers on upside down and then had to fix them later. So you just kind of set the, the cooler on and I'll come over to that side in just a second. With this step, because you remember it's spring loaded, you don't want to screw one side more than just a little bit to start. So just go back and forth. Because for one, if you do it too much at an angle, you're gonna end up putting like an indention in the CPU. For two, you're gonna squeeze all your thermal paste to one side. You can always verify if your cooler is mounted properly. Make sure the backplate looks good. You should be able to pick this thing up too, guys. I mean, these things should be able to withstand some force. We're gonna go ahead and uh, pull out our ARGB fan here. And the direction of the fan does matter. You really wanna have the fan on the RAM side. Obviously, if your sticks of the RAM are too tall, you can put it on the other side, but then it's really close to the exhaust fan. You do want the fan to face this way because air is gonna come in and go straight out of the exhaust. I recommend having the cable right here so you can kind of run it behind the board. I wanna make sure we get the height of the fan just right. I basically want it to be like right at the top of the cooler. Is that, is that pretty straight, Jonah? What do you think? All right, and now we just gotta plug in the fan header so we don't forget. And also once you get it inside the case, sometimes this is a pretty hard step. So we're gonna plug it into CPU fan one. If you decide to plug it into two or some other random fan header, you're gonna get an error every time you start your PC. And on top of that, your fan may not run at the right speeds based on the CPU temp. But this right here, ladies and gentlemen, is a completed board. And I'd say it looks pretty good. So now let's move on to the next step. I'm ready, I'm ready. Calling Matt in, tag team. All right, it's time to install the power supply and then get the motherboard installed in the case. Now, we're gonna go and open our power supply. Again, Zolman Gigamax power supply. I always mention this with these build guides, but it is important to know, this is a non-modular power supply, meaning it has every single cable you need and some that you don't pre-attached to the power supply. It's easier for beginners that way also because you know what, you don't have to worry about plugging in cables that you think you'd need, um, but it does make kill management a little more difficult, but we'll get to that later. But open up your power supply, get rid of all this protective covering. So here we go, here's the power supply. It's all in Gigamax 600 watt power supply, very solid power supply. We're gonna set that to the side. We're gonna get rid of our box here. And we're gonna go ahead and untie this little twist tie to get all our cables out. I really like this power supply because of the black sleeve cables. You can get sleeve extensions, you wanna make it look a little nicer, but we're talking 750 bucks, 1440p. Got a custom quarters in the aesthetics department, but it'll still look good. Power supply ready to go. Now we're gonna grab our case, which is a Sama case that we have not used before. And I have to give a big round of applause to Sama because there is a step in some of our step-by-step -step guides where we have to flip this fan because the cable comes out from the bottom here instead of the side, but Sama has it ready to go. So round of applause. 
Sama, you're doing something good over there, making our cable management lives a lot easier. So we're gonna take our case. As you can see, we have the timber glass side panel already taken off. We put the screws back in so you don't lose them. And we also have this back panel already off, which we put the screws back in so you don't lose them because we need to install the power supply through the back panel. This is where the power supply is gonna go, but we gotta make some room here to actually be able to put the power supply in. So we're gonna undo this little twist tie that holds a very important bag here, which isn't as nice as their other cases that comes with the little box that has all the organized screws, but it has all the screws you need for this PC build and a couple of zip ties for cable management if you don't have any at home. Hey, <laughs> what a good old boy. <laughs> PC bros don't take. <laughs> so we're gonna open up this screw bag because screw you, screw bag. Whoa. And we're gonna go ahead and see all the screws we have. We have some uh, coarse threaded screws, we have some fine threaded screws, we have some power supply screws, we have a wide selection of screws that'll help you build this PC. What we're gonna need for the power supply are some coarse threaded screws, which you can get from this bag or use this little bag that does come with the power supply with more zip ties, which by the way, you have enough zip ties to cable manage this build, you don't need to buy your own. We'll go and get the screws that came with the power supply out because we're just gonna use those and save the other ones for later. And you should end up with these, four coarse threaded power supply screws that allow us to screw in our power supply. We're going to take our power supply. You always want the fan side facing down because if you look at this case, the power supply gets its airflow from the bottom of the case right here. There's actually a fan filter for it to be able to pull its air in. And that's why a lot of people tell you not to put your PC on carpet because it's just gonna be pulling in a bunch of dust and a bunch of crap into your power supply, which you don't wanna have. So keep your PC above carpet. So we're gonna take our power supply here and we're going to slide it in ever so slowly right here until the screw holes line up at the back. I'm gonna lean over this table to see if I can figure out where the screw holes are. Right there, there we go. So we got one right there, one right there, one in the far left and the one right above it. And we're gonna take those screws that we got out, the coarse thread power supply screws, and we're gonna go ahead and screw in those screws. Sometimes you do have to hold the power supply a little bit. We're gonna do the bottom right. We'll go and go up here to this one, over to here, and down to the bottom left. And just like that, your power supply is installed, ready to go. We have all these cables we're gonna deal with later, but we don't need to get to that point yet. We need to get our motherboard installed. And to get the motherboard installed, we gotta put our IO shield in, which our IO shield is over here. I think Jackson probably showed that in the motherboard unboxing, but here's your IO shield. You need to install it in this open spot right here in the back of the case. And the best way to know which way it goes in is normally these little audio ports on the bottom are always gonna be on the bottom, so you can just go with that. Or if you wanna verify, you go over to your motherboard, line it up like this, and you can see how the IO shield actually works, and the motherboard's gonna be installed like this. So you can do it that way, but for this build in particular, just have these audio ports on the bottom like this. So we're gonna go ahead and go over here, and we're going to push in the IO shield by pushing in on all four corners. Honestly, this case is like the loosest IO shield mount I've ever felt in my life. It just kind of like fit in there. That was like the nicest experience I've ever had. Is it gonna stay in though? Did you see that, John? I just like pushed it and it just went in. That normally never happens. So your mileage may vary depending on the tooling in this case, but our IO shield installed and ready to go. Now we gotta lay the case down and then lower the table for your cameraman because that's very important. And we're gonna go ahead and make sure there's no extra standoffs in this case. Standoffs, you might ask, are these little things right here that allow you to screw the motherboard into the case. So we have one, two, three, four, five and six. And I'm gonna guess, actually no, I might be in the right spot, that everything is in the right position, but we just wanna make sure there's not gonna be an extra one that doesn't line up with one of these holes because it will touch the back of the motherboard, short it out and cause your system not to boot. So if you have any issues with your build, definitely check that. But we'll go ahead here and make sure everything looks like it's gonna line up just fine, but we'll just verify here by plop them in the motherboard, plop them in the motherboard. And we're gonna line up our ports in the back with the IO shield. Make sure nothing is getting covered. Everything looks good there. No rogue cables or anything like that. And this one right here, this standoff is actually raised to where if you push it, it'll actually rest in there so your motherboard won't move around at all. It's pretty nice. And as you can tell, all the points that we need to screw in, the two up here, the two on the side, the two right here, and yeah, that's it, are all good to go. And we can screw in the motherboard and there's no extra ones that are touching the back of the motherboard. So we're gonna go ahead and I believe this is a fine threaded screw motherboard, meaning we wanna use these screws right here. We'll get a couple different angles of that. There's your fine threaded screws. And for comparison, that is the power supply coarse threaded screw. You don't wanna use those for this. There are some cases that do use it, but if you're following this build guide, you don't need to worry about it. And we're gonna go ahead and screw in those points that I just showed you guys. All right, guys, we're gonna start with our top left here. Screw, screw, screw. And then we're gonna take the other screw 
do the same thing right here. I do like this case because it does have more room if you did want to go with an AIO compared to the other Sama case. Um, you could do that. There's a lot more room up top. Far left in the middle, one on the far left right here. Screw, screw, screw. Now, yes, if you wanted to have this screw hole and this one also screwed down, you can, but you will need to install the extra standoffs that come with the case. But in our use cases, this is plenty to hold the motherboard down. I mean, these outer ones, like it doesn't really matter all that much, but if you wanna be extra careful with your build, you can definitely do that. And uh, we do take extra care over at PCBros.tech. But yeah, this is a very secure motherboard, good to go. We're gonna go ahead and sit this up to show you guys that it is secure. I'm gonna raise up our table. And this is the point where things get very fun. We get to plug everything up. We get to plug up the 24 pin, the CPU power, the ARG, um, to get everything nice and working. And then we're gonna install our graphics card, the best part about the build. And from there, we're gonna see what this thing can do in gaming. But we gotta plug up everything first. Don't be scared, we're gonna show you how. All right guys, so now we're on to the part of plugging everything in and then cable management. We're gonna start off with the 24 pin, which is a giant connector coming off the power supply. It's your main power. I'm gonna go ahead and feed that through this gigantic hole. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take our 24 pin. Be sure to add the plus four connector to the side. And we're gonna go ahead and flip it around like so. Make sure to line up the clip with the little slot right here. It really wasn't a satisfying click at all. Sometimes it'll do a satisfying click, sometimes it won't. But as you can see, the 24 pin is nice and secure and installed. And we're gonna give this back to Jackson. He can have that, I don't want it. Guys, next up, we're gonna be doing the thing that powers the CPU, the CPU eight pin. And this one does come with an eight plus four, but we really only need the eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and feed that through up top. There she is, she escaped. Now I'm probably gonna block it, but you need to plug in to this ATX12 V1 connector up here. Same deal with the 24 pin, make sure to line up the clip with the slots that it goes into. And we're going to push and boom. That one actually gave us a little bit of click. Push those cables back through and there you go. We have our CPU power ready to go. I think we do, so, so at this point we basically powered the motherboard. We will come back to a couple things in the power supply in a little bit, but I think, uh, Let's just do the hardest thing first, which is these guys right here. So it's really not too bad if you follow along, but this is your front panel. This is how you use your power button, your reset switch, all that good stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and start plugging in the front panel connectors with the hard drive LED positive and negative. We're gonna go ahead and plug that in in the bottom left two pins. Boop. Then you're gonna take these two guys, which are the power LED, which are the only two that are separated normally out of the box, the power LED positive and negative. We're gonna do the positive one first and then by negative connector, that negative energy. And last, we only have the old power switch. And that's going to go right next to the power LED. We don't have a reset switch because I believe this thing uses the reset switch to control the RGB in the case. So we're good there. So next up, we're gonna be plugging in the HD audio. You'll notice that the HD audio is missing a pin kind of towards the middle. So that is gonna also be labeled HD audio. So it should be pretty obvious. We're gonna put that right above the power supply. So we're gonna take the HD audio and plug it up right here. You didn't see what I pointed to. You're gonna plug it up to the far left connector with the missing pin. Again, line up the missing pin where the pin is missing. Push that back and boom, HD audio is installed. All right, next up, we have the USB 2. So that's gonna be missing a pin on the far side rather than towards the middle. And this one, I think right here would be a good spot. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, there we go. There's good old USB. Two. Not three. Not three. Two. USB two. And we're gonna plug it up to one of these two headers right here. Doesn't really matter. We're gonna plug it up to this one. Again, line up the missing pin, plug it in, push it back, boom, you're good to go. Wait, right, where's USB three? Oh, I see it. Okay. So USB three is a connector you can't really miss. It's usually really large and it has some blue on it. This is one you gotta be really careful with. It can only go in one way and you don't wanna bend any pins. There it is. Boom. USB three. Big old chunky connector. I'm gonna line her up, push it in. And boom, oh. that sounded so crunchy, but you know what? It's installed. USB 3 is good to go. So next up, we're gonna be doing the PCIe power. So these are gonna power your graphics card. Every graphics card is different. Some will use a six, some will use an eight, some will use none. So I think for this one, we just need a single eight pin. So we're just gonna feed this one through. And there actually is a convenient spot to run it cleanly right up front, right there. And here it is, PCI power good to go for us to install our GPU. So really the last step before getting the GPU in is gonna be plugging in these two ARGB headers. So these are what control the lighting on your fans and also your cooler. So this is a new one. We haven't really plugged up ARGB in these build guides before, but there it is. As you can see, there is a missing pin right there for the three pin ARGB. You just have to line it up 
with the missing pin on the motherboard. So as you can see, we have our two ARGB headers plugged up. Now we can install the software from the motherboard and control both the fans from the case and the cooler. All right, so I think at this point, I just need to kind of clean some of these. Actually, no, I need to plug in one more thing. I need to power the Molex for the fans in this case. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in real quick. Let him handle all that and then we'll do our Let GPUs. me cook. So right now I'm just kind of un untangling some of these cables. It'll just make it easier for us to cable manage. So those right here is an archaic little connector. This is Molex. So we're gonna take the one from the power supply. Looks like that. And it's just gonna go in like this. Sometimes it's a little hard to, to actually get them to seat properly. You know, and this just happened, there we go. This just happens to be one of those ones. So we're plugged in, feels pretty good, nice and snug. I'm just gonna go ahead, shove all this extra cabling in here for now while Matt gets that GPU in because that'll make cable management a little bit easier on my end. Now here's our GPU guys, the 7600, looking nice and clean. We're gonna go ahead and install the GPU real quick, which can be very straightforward. All right guys, so first up, we need to unscrew this GPU slot cover right here. It's a little thumb screw, but you can use a screwdriver. It's on a little bit too tight. So we'll move it back here. And now we need to make sure we know where the two slot covers are gonna to need to come off to line up the GPU when we install it. All right guys, so before we take off these covers right here, we're gonna make sure we take off the right ones. We're gonna take our GPU, slot it in the system right here where it's going to go on the topmost slot on the motherboard. And as you can see, we have this top one right here which uses a screw to come off and this one right here which will need to be broken off and we're gonna to need to go ahead and take those off. So we'll take our GPU out for a second, grab our handy dandy screwdriver and unscrew this top screw. Normally it's a pretty safe bet that the top one is always gonna have to come off, but sometimes, depending on where the PCI slot is on the motherboard, you might have to take off other ones. As you can see with the screw out, that one just falls out of place. Boom, we're done. Now this one right here, we do have to break off, which means you just have to wiggle it back and forth. Wiggle, 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 and boom, comes right off. Now we're gonna take our graphics card, and again, make sure that your PCI slot is ready for your graphics card by pushing on this lock right here which opens it up so the GPU can slot in. And of course, be sure to take off this little plastic cover that normally comes with your graphics card on the PCI slot right here. So we're gonna take the graphics card, we're gonna go ahead and line it right up, and we're going to push in until we hear a click. Boom, yeah. just like that. That was actually the one satisfying click from this build. Now we're gonna take that power supply screw, or the screw that was for this top slot, put it on our screwdriver, and screw the top in. And we're gonna go ahead and take another power supply screw that came with the case screws and screw in the bottom. And now we're gonna go ahead and push this cover back on and use the thumb screw. Boop, just like that, our cover is good to go. Now the last thing we have to do is power the GPU by taking this power connector that Jackson fed through earlier and plug it up right here. It just needs an eight pin. And boom, just like that, our GPU is powered and everything else is powered and ready to go. Now we're just gonna clean it up a little bit. You don't necessarily need to do this. We like to show you guys how to make your builds look nice and clean. And then from there, we'll be able to install Windows and play some games. It's that time of the day, cable management time. Follow along with me. I'm just kidding, this isn't really something super easy to follow along with, honestly. You kind of just do what feels right. I say it looks pretty good. I like to leave the, the actual basement area with all the extra cables nice and loose because you never know when you wanna do an upgrade or you need to do some troubleshooting. You don't wanna have all of your cables too tight. So really just having this area looking good is what's important. All right, you ready to persuade it? Let's persuade Come it. Come on, side panel, you got this. You got this, go on. Go on, side panel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That actually wasn't that bad. It wasn't too bad. Mm, no. Some of them you really gotta use like two people and it's almost like one of those old family movies where the suitcase is so full that someone has to like sit on it and then it explodes, you know? But this one wasn't too bad. We have everything built. Now we just gotta see if it actually turns on and see if we have everything good to go there. And then from there, we go ahead and install Windows, which if you guys want a guide on how to install Windows, the PC Bros YouTube channel has a lot of informative stuff on how to install Windows and stuff like that. So you can definitely take a look at that video. But today we're gonna show you how to get everything up and running build-wise and then dive into some gaming, but we gotta see, does it work? You ready? Uh... <laughs> yeah, like, uh -oh. buddy. That was a little delayed. Now everything will be kind of out of sync right now um, until we get into RGB software, I'd assume. Yeah, either that or, you um, know, these, these ARGB headers seldomly actually work. For some reason, usually the button overrides it. So we might just have to make it match the fan, which is doing like a RGB. Is there like an inline control on the? No. No. <laughs> so this is what you're getting, ladies and gentlemen, RGB. Um, but you just yeah. have to change the fan software and then match this with the button, basically. Yeah, exactly. So worst case, again, you'd figure out the software for one of them, then match it with the case button. But we got everything working so far. We'll see if it turns off with one click. This is normally a good sign. 
boom. Yay. Good sign, good to go. Now, let's see what this thing can do in gaming, and um, yeah, have some fun with it. Let's do it. It's time for the finals, the Vogues, you could say. And uh, once we get in here, I can show you guys the settings, but we are gonna be kind of pushing this thing a little bit because we think that it can handle it. But we're at 1080p FSR2, high settings. We had the balanced FSR preset. We're looking nice. pretty good. Fairly demanding esports title out there. And this game is really loud. But um, yeah, obviously we mentioned this is very 1440p ready as well on medium settings. You probably get similar results 1440p. So cool to see at 1080p, we're pretty much maxing this out. Oh, Ooh. booted. Yeah, mm. die. What do you guys want to? Oh, we have the cash. It's so bright. Oh, God damn. Ah! L, L, L. Oh, I hear someone coming up this way. Ah! Mink. That's, that's a hit. Uh, <laughs> yes. Mines. Watch this. <laughs> Low gravity. Find a quick way into the building. That was such a bad. <laughs> I wonder if I can make this. <gasps> nope. Throw some grenades up there. Oh, I'm burning two of them. Identified them. Oh, he's an invisible guy. He's coming hot. Dude, please, please. I can't eat. Where, 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 oh, where oh, am no. I? And where oh, is this guy? Oh my god, he died somehow. You got assist. This is a smart. I mean, see, I like this. They got an. Uh oh. We don't like that. I like that. Ah! Mess him up, mess him up. I kind of did just mess him up. Oh, oh that just directed like, oh my God, he's got a double oh, kill. Oh, double kill. Let me hide. Someone else is probably gonna try to come down here, you know, so. I don't even know what color that is. I probably shouldn't even be shooting someone. Uh, oh, second place. Close enough. Performance is good though. It was Not really too bad. good. Very good for those esports titles, and I think Triple A's will also have a really good shot on this. Next game. Next. All right, gamers. We are now playing some Fortnite. 1080p, 165 FPS lock, performance mode, and we're on far view distance and low textures. Theoretically, with an RX 7600, DX12 would be ideal because these AMD GPUs tend to run better on DX12. But I wanted to see if performance settings we could still get 100 plus FPS or even get better performance than we would with DX12. And it might take a couple drops to actually see that, but we do have a limited to 165. If we get close to that, probably stay performance settings. If not, go DX12. We probably get the exact same results, but with better quality. Oh, hey, what's up? I don't want to deal with you right now. Sorry. Bye. Whoop, 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 whoop. Ah! Who is this? Oh my goodness! A dumb move. Push, 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 push. push. Oh. oh. Looks like the dark night to me. Somebody, oh, they found me first. Ah, there you are. Oh, oh, they were like one tickle. I got killed by a little smoke. It is what it is, guys. But hey, Fortnite performance looking pretty solid. Well, now we gotta test this PC with 3D Mark so you can compare it to all the other PCs that we have benchmarked here on the channel into 2024. And um, yeah, talk about the value proposition because for $750, this combo is absolutely awesome. All right, guys, we just got done benchmarking the $750 gaming PC, and it did really well. We absolutely love the RX 7600 because it is an awesome entry-level 1440p gaming card, but if you want some really high refresh rate, you can use a 7600 at 1080p to play games like the Finals, an eSports title, at high settings, and get your high refresh rate.
And in Fortnite 1080p performance settings, we got really good results as well. 100 plus FPS, no problems whatsoever. And of course, we have to compare it versus the other PCs we built on the channel with 3D Mark Time Spy. And we got a score of 10,625, which results in a seven cent per point score, which for comparison, and for comparison, this computer got the exact same point percent score as our desk meet PC with the RTX 4060 and Ryzen 5 5600. So all in all, this is a really good price performance PC for $750. And if you want to build one yourself, check those links in the description down below. They will be affiliate links. They will help us out. Also stay subscribed because we'll be doing a 1440p gaming setup with this PC to show you guys the 1440p performance of the RX 7600 that we talked about in this video. So stay subscribed for that and let us know what other build guides you want to see here on the channel. And as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye so now that you guys get to see how to build this PC, if you happen to just want to buy this PC instead with the one year warranty and Windows 11 Pro already installed, tested, and activated with customer support, you should check out PCBros.Tech. PCBros.Tech, we sell this gaming PC, it's going to be listed on the website, and many more, and if you use code TOASTYBROS2 on checkout, you'll save 2% on your next purchase. See you guys later, goodbye. Peace out.